Issue 138 After the brainwashed Mighty goes to look for Sonic in the swamp, Sonic punches him in a hiding spot and is worried about trying to pull the mind root out of his head. Because who knows what that might do to him? Yeesh, yeah exactly. I'm glad they were self-aware enough to point that out. With Mighty knocked out, Espio ambushes him and Sonic attacks him, apologizing all the while. And Charmy knocks himself out by flying to rocks or something. <laughs> causing Sonic to call him an idiot rather than worry about him having even more brain damage. Vector swipes him with his tail, and because Sonic's clever enough to want to avoid his jaw, he ties him up with a vine, and when he says something all muffled, Sonic says amusingly, You said it, Vector! Why was that Do Not Open Until Christmas sign even there in a swamp anyways? Does the swamp monster celebrate Christmas? With Sonic having easily knocked out all of the Chaotix, because I guess he used his super speed to hit them extra hard, but controlled it to an exact extent that it wasn't enough to injure them, and I guess he did research on how fast he'd have to hit them to get to that exact scenario. He then gets threatened by Mighty's father, and after kicking his dinosaur, he cleverly starts to tickle its belly. Unfortunately, Mighty's father just complains about it rather than even trying to attack Sonic. Sonic then runs towards Root, who had such a bland basic name that I kept forgetting it. And Root creates some sort of tiki statue. Sonic sarcastically compliments it and then knocks it over saying he's not impressed. Then it's revealed that Root is just a regular Mobian who gets out of the thing he was in, and Sonic assumes that his only real magic was controlling people, and all of his swampy creatures vanish. Fortunately, the guy reveals that he's not Root, his name is Morton, just like in Mario. He tells Sonic that Root is the pink Root that's running away. And Sonic puts him in a bottle he conveniently had somehow that has no air holes in it. Fortunately. Also fortunately, the mine Roots just dropped off the Chaotix's necks. Even though Sonic clearly saw one in Mighty's head. Whatever. Morton explains that years ago he was brainwashed by Root, who grew all around him while he was powerless. Sonic calls him Buddy, saying that he believes him. The story ends with Sonic saying the root might taste good in a bowl of chili sauce with some rice, but since it's moving around, he'd have to wait until it suffocates in that air hole bottle first. And I doubt he'd actually get away with eating a sentient being. So it's just one of his famous strange sense of humor jokes. Or maybe, maybe he did eat it. Who knows? In the next story, it turns out that out of complete nowhere, at least one of the villains says you'd have to be insane to try to steal such unstable Chaos Emeralds. And all the villains are looking for is treasure. Is this just a lie to fool him? He has a shock collar already, so why should they need to lie? Weren't they heading for the Chaos Chamber earlier? This is respectfully genre-savvy of them, considering the Chaos Emeralds used to need to be stored in a cold place for a reason. But it's a very jarring twist. It feels like this was thought up at the last minute. Knuckles punches the criminals, calling them out satisfyingly. I've never met a bunch of more smug, self-satisfied creeps in my life. He punches another one, and the green girl picks up the thing that would let her remotely shock Knuckles, but fortunately he gets broken by the guard robots just in time. It's a really good thing the robots know that Knuckles is a friend instead of trying to hurt him. How? Are they programmed to go after any non-echidnas? And Porker's program is an exception, I guess. After the girl asks why the robot sensors aren't being jammed, the villains all surrender, and Knuckles tells the robots to bring them to the cage where the Eggman fanboys were left, and he'll arrange for the authorities to get them off the island. Then Porker gets out of the robot head saying that he's tougher than people think. Why did he quit being a hero then? He says that the criminals didn't realize these robots could be piloted manually, so he tricks them into just assuming their jamming equipment had failed. I had a suspicion that they were making the assumption wrongly, because the robots didn't immediately try to attack them, just stood there doing nothing. He says that he had just told the other robots to stay close to him while he was piloting one of them. The story ends with Knuckles asking Porker with amusingly relatable annoyance, Will you please help me get out of this blasted collar? In the next story, we see someone named Dr. Genius at a beach ball party, celebrating that he had committed a crime last week and got away with it. He explains that it had started a few months ago, and that he's always been jealous of heroes like Tails. So he became a hero himself, right? No, of course not. That would have actually made sense, and actually solved this problem by getting people's praise. Instead, he gouts Tails, saying he'll rob a bank and activate a force field, which repels everything around it so that even the walls of the bank would crumble from the energy. 
Well, that's pretty interesting for a force field, actually. He then insults a guard for supposedly playing hero as his blasts bounce off his force field and tells us to tell him to stop firing while pushing him down. Then reality ensues, as because of his repelling force field, he can't get near the money at all. He turns the gadget off, tails punches him, and the story ends with it being revealed that he was in a jail all along with only a picture of people playing at a beach behind him. It's good that he got what he deserved, but the first panel was a total narrative cheat. I was expecting that he would have gotten away with it, and that would have been an actual twist at this point. And there's a text box at the bottom of the panel saying, Next issue, Tails fights back. But I highly doubt it'll be a story where Tails satisfyingly beats Sonic up, calling him out all the times he called him Pixel Brain, or Dummy, or Dimo. So I'm expecting its title to be incredibly disappointing. And fortunately from hands, I can stop now because the rest of the issue is wasted on a reprint. The first two stories were by Nigel Kitchen. In the first story, Sonic knocks out all of the Chaotix in like one hit with the super speed attacks, I guess. Which does make sense, but was disappointingly anticlimactic. Though I love the way he was created by tying Vector up and tickling the dinosaur's chest, rather than taking a direct approach and risking his neck. And Root ends up trapped in a bottle Sonic somehow found, but the story ends before we could see what he does with him. So it's not that satisfying. In the second story, it turns out the villains were smart enough to not want to steal the emeralds, but instead just treasure. This jarring twist makes them so much less threatening to the world that I stopped seeing them as people who should be stopped, even though they're noxiously smug about it. Because come on, so what if they want to get ancient treasure? No one's using it! It's a waste of perfectly good treasure! It looks so tame compared to what the whole arc was making me expect of them. I like that Porker saved the day at the end by piloting a robot manually to trick them into surrendering. And I guess they did deserve to be locked up purely for being such smug jerks with electrocuted knuckles. But still, compared to trying to steal Chaos Emeralds, just let them take the treasure already! Who cares? And the final story was by Lou Stringer. It was about a mad scientist who got jealous of the heroes' praise, and rather than becoming a hero himself, since that'd obviously be what would get him what he wants, he created an interesting force field that repels everything including the money he wanted to steal, so he turned off the gadget without having killed the people who were trying to stop him first, and ended up in jail because of it, when I could've... He could've maybe gotten away by pointing the gadget at the ground so he'd repel himself away from the heroes. Him actually getting away with it and being on a beach would've been an interesting subversion at this point and make him look like the smartest of the criminals, even if he did deserve to be punished for his stupidity.